And we're back again to deal with some logarithmic equations. Don't forget about the properties of logarithms and the solving principles we talked about last time. So let's start off with a very simple logarithmic equation. Let's start off with the log base 3 of x equals 7. whole idea of how this works is you can get rid of a logarithm, remember, using this property, a to the log base a of x equals x. So if I can get this side into the exponent of 3, the log will go away. Well, that's easy enough. Our first solving principle said we could raise both sides into the power of 3. So that means we have x equals 3 to the 7th. And honestly, that's fine for the answer. You can work it out if you want. 3 to the 7th is... I'm not even going to bother to go to my calcu to go to the calculator on screen. It's uh, 2187. Let's do exercise 55 first. Log of 3x plus 5 equal to... Well, remember this is a base 10 log, so to get rid of the log, I put both sides into the exponent of 10. So that means 3x plus 5 equal 10 squared. So 3x equal... 100 minus 5, I moved the 5 over, so x is going to be 95 over 3. And we're done. This is x size 59, I have the log base 2 of x, plus the log base 2 of x minus 3. equals 2. Well, to do this, I need to have a single logarithm on the side, so I need to make that happen. Well, we actually have a rule for combining two logs that have the same base into a single logarithm. Remember the product rule. If you have two logs, that can become log base 2, x times x minus 3. And then I have a single logarithm, so I raise both sides into the power of 2. And I now have x times x minus 3 equals 2 squared. So that is x squared minus 3x. I'm going to go ahead and bring that over. Minus 4 equals 0. I think that factors. x minus 4 x plus 1, so x equals 4 and negative 1. Now, logarithmic equations you do need to check, because negative 1 can't work. If you plug in negative 1, you get log base 2 of negative 1, undefined. Log base 2 of negative 4, undefined. Negative 1 cannot be a solution, but 4 can. If you plug in log base 2 of 4, plus log base 2 of, let's see, 4 minus 3 would be 1. So log base 2 of 4 is 2, log base 2 of 1 is 0, 2 plus 0 equals 2. And we're good. Let's do one more basic log equation. Let's say 61. Here I have the log base 9 of x minus 5 plus the log base 9 of x plus 3 equals 1. Actually, well, I'll do this one. I'll also do um, 63. So 
So that would be um, log base 9, x minus 5, x plus 3, a equals 1, and then multiply that together, you get x, and put, put both sides into the power of 9, you get a x minus 5 times x plus 3 equals 9 to the 1. So you get x squared minus 2x and minus 15 equals 9. Take the 9 over, x squared minus 2x minus 24 equals 0. x minus 6, x plus 4 equals 0. And then x equals 6 and negative 4. And I don't think negative four can work, but six can. I'm just gonna erase before I do 63. 63, log base five x plus one, minus log base five x minus one, equals two. Well, this would be a quotient rule because I got a subtraction of two logs. So that would be the log base 5x plus 1 over x minus 1. Then I can get rid of the logarithm by raising both sides into the power of 5. So that would be x plus 1 over x minus 1 equal 5 squared would be 25. This is a rational equation, so I multiply both sides times x minus 1 x plus 1 equal 25x minus 25. Get all my x terms on one side, so negative 24x equal negative 26, I think. Yeah. x equal 26 over 24, which would be 13 over 12. And yeah, that should actually work out. If you do the check. All right, let's look at an application problem or two. So let's do a compound interest problem. We're going to do 87. And 87 says, find the time required for 5,000 to grow to 8,000 at 7.5 percent per year. Compounded quarterly. I'll do something else with this as well. We have several ways of compounding, so we'll look at a couple of them. Alright, compounded quarterly. That means a finite number of times, so we're going to be using the compound interest formula. P times 1 plus R over N to the NT. Alright. Our original amount was 5,000. 1 plus 0 0.075 was our interest rate. Compounded quarterly, so that's four times a year. 4T. We want to get this to be 8,000. To divide the 5,000 out, we have 8 fifths. This is an exponential equation, by the way, because we are solving for the uh, t in the exponent. We're trying to figure out the time. You actually do the set. That's an exact decimal, so I might as well figure out what that is. 1 plus 0.075 divided by 4 is 1.01875. Let's just write that instead.
point oh one eight seven five to the fourteen. All right. Now remember to get an a, a variable out of an exponent. We have to take a log of both sides. I've been taking lots of ln's, so let's let's actually take another log. Let's do a base ten log of both sides, just for variety. 1.01875 to the 4t. Take the 4t down. Log of 1.018.75. So now it's fairly simple to solve for t though, because t, you just divide out the parts you don't need. So divide by the 4, divide by the log. So t equals log of eight fifths divided by four log of one point oh one eight seven five. And at last we have it. That is the amount of time. You can approximate it with your calculator. I'll go ahead and bring that up for this. So we have the log of 8 over 5 divided by, let's see, I need parentheses around that. So 4 log of uh, 1.018. 7.5, close, close. So it's about 6.33 years, and you know, if you want to know how many years it would take, you'd probably want to round up and say 7. But it just depends on how the problem wants it. This would be the exact answer, and I rounded probably to the nearest quarter, so probably to the 6.5, but still. All right, let's do the same problem, but instead of quarterly, let's say continuously. It's not 87 anymore. So that would be, instead of the compound interest formula, we use the compounded continuously formula, PE to the RT. Well, we just plug in 8,000 equal 5,000, E to the 0 0.075 times T. Divide out the 5,000, you get 8 fifths equal E to the 0 0.075 T. Take an LN of both sides. And the nice thing about this is take ln of e to the 0.075t, and remember, I didn't take a base 10 log on this one because log base e of e to the 0.075t is just 0.075t. It cancels out. So t equals ln of 8 fifths divided by point. 075. Let's compare that. Ln of 8 fifths oh, excuse me. divided by 0 0.075 about 6.27. So you can see it's not a lot of difference, but it is a difference. Let's do an application of logarithmic equations. So this is 96. It says this equation. Suppose you're driving your car on a cold winter day, 20 degrees Fahrenheit outside, and the engine overheats at about 220 degrees Fahrenheit. When you park, the engine begins to cool down. The temperature T of the engine 
T minutes, little T minutes after you park satisfies the equation. You'll see why I'm not writing all that down in just a second. Satisfies this equation, T minus 20 over 200 equals negative 0 0.11 little t. And the instruction is for A, solve for capital T. First thing to do would be to get rid of the logarithm, so I'd raise both sides into the power of E. So I get T minus 20 over 200 equals E to the negative 0.11 T. Then I did E because remember LN is log base E. It's the abbreviation for log base E. Then multiply off the 200, capital T minus 20 equal 200 e to the negative 0.11 t and then just add the 20 over. Two hundred e to the negative point one one t plus twenty. Then part B, it just says use part A to find the temperature of the engine after 20 minutes. Well then, right now I have T in terms of time, so I just plug in capital T equals 200 to the negative point one one times twenty plus Then you just plug that into your calculator and get your approximation. I would get 200, let's see, just use a quick key, e to the negative 0.11 times 20, and then plus 20. So that's about 42.16 degrees Fahrenheit. Alright, that'll finish us on 4.5. Next time we'll come back and talk about some 4.6. See you then.